This is Todmorden Tourism. Visit Todmorden. Todmorden is one of the few places in Calderdale, West Yorkshire, where on a Tuesday road rules don't apply to cyclists. You don't have to give way to your right, and you're very welcome to run through red lights, especially when there's pedestrians. Good lad. Todmorden, Tuesday. As a Todd tourist, you might be thinking, what on earth can I do here on a rainy Tuesday? I'm alone, I'm scared, and I just wish for once in my life that my dad would say, I love you, son. You wasted your cash at the weekend doing the cycling flip-flop between Todd's last two remaining pubs, the Duke of Ark and Welle. The Duke of Ark, Welle. Duke of Ark, Welle. You've tricked yourself into thinking that you weren't even drinking that much, but someone's really affected those serotonin levels, and your vitamin D has been depleted. So what can you do to cheer yourself up on this rare tree Tomadon day? Well, let's get high. That's right, brace yourself, because today we're going to have a look right up Serol, through Doghouse and parking. If those words don't make any sense to you, do grab a free map from Tomadon Information Centre. Serol has an altitude of 280 metres above the sea level and road up to it is the steepest, tallest, highest road in the world. And do be warned, it has an adverse camber. We're heading up Doghouse Lane here, so named because of the puppy farms which litter the area. If you're after a cheap cockapoo, this is the place for you. As a fully paid up member of the Tobin Tourist Society membership is free, you will be feeling a twinge of regret after spending your entire monthly budget over the weekend on tickets for the Wellies Meat Raffle. One pound a ticket, 25 quid voucher. You'll have spent more than 200 quid not only on that but on pints of Foster's and Stella and Carlin and Cider and Black and Blue Wicked whilst doing the Ark Welly flip flop over Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you might have said some things that you regret and those thoughts are repeating around your head in every waking moment and you can't sleep too well anyway at night and you're not half as funny as you think you are and all your friends don't talk to you anymore for a reason and that reason is you and all you want to know if your own parents ever loved you and was it the emotional childhood neglect which has trapped you in this endless cycle of trying to win people's approval. Here we are passing Sigit Lane, which adjoins the rear of Centerville Park, which features the Grade 2 listed building Tombardon Bandstand, one of the more flammable buildings in Tombardon, which self ignites on a bi decadely basis as a mark of remembrance for the poor Fielding family, who, despite once being one of the most prosperous families in Tombardon, have now sadly lost every penny, largely due to the fact that they all died well over a hundred years ago. R.I.P. in peace. To your left, on a clear day, you'll be lucky enough to catch a glimpse of one of Tobin's largest castles, named De Bruyde. De Bruyde Castle has a long and salubrious history tied to the aforementioned and now defunct Fielding family. It began life in 1866, when John Fielding Jr. fell in love with the town alcoholic Ruth. As was tradition at the time, she insisted that he build her a house, and being smitten, he reached deep into his pockets and spewed up only £71,000 to build not just a house, but a castle. As was tradition at the time, the wealthy cotton mill owning families had a few quid stored to one side from their hard work and dedication to the slave trade, and within three years they'd built a 66-room castle, of which they proudly used only four of the rooms, while happily reaping the profit from the factory workers down in the sod. Valley. Dobride has had many faces since the fielding's croaked it. It's been a prison for naughty teens, a prison for Buddhists, and often you'll see transients, white men with dreadlocks, and people who speak in a rising inflection cycling home after a hard day's work. This is Tobidon Tourism. Visit Tobidon.
as a Tomadon tourist, you'll be wanting to get a feel for the local history. Learning a little local knowledge can really help shoot you those lonely feelings which have been building up exponentially since the start of this seemingly fruitless journey. Here up Sour Hall Road, you'll spot the remnants of the now defunct Sour Hall pub. You may be thinking, why is there a pub in such an isolated area? Well, this 18th century building was one of the first of the many swingers pubs in Todd. Back then, swinging was not only legal, it was mandatory due to the population implosion which occurred after the inaugural Tomadon Carnival. It proved to be a very popular place for years and many locals searched for the loves of their lives there, long before pampas grass and car keys became the norm. They'd be ferried up by minibus on a Saturday evening, would spend 30 to 40 minutes looking for love, and then would repeat that process, and then one more time, and then another time if they still had it in them, up until the last orders were called. Some say it was a modern day precursor to the Welly Meat Raffle. Here it is coming up on the left. Originally it was wide open to the public, but after only 150 years it was purchased by local masons, who outlawed any thoughts of procreation and reclaimed it as a place to practice their traditions of handshake, charity work and ritualistic human sacrifices. The pub has long since been abandoned and is now a private residence, but the memories will live on for at least a decade or more before the people who used to attend reach the end of their life cycle. Won't be long now. Sadly, due to paranoia and panic attacks, we're unable to stop the car to explore this area today. So instead, we'll be heading down Sarah Road and brace ourselves for the first whiff of Bake Up in the distance. As a Todd tourist, you'll want to avoid Bake Up. Avoid Bake Up. Every Tuesday, you'll be treated to one of these beautiful cloud inversions, which at first appear to be entirely natural but are in fact an horrific byproduct to the meat raffle process. The noxious clouds will linger for most of the morning, hence the half day closing on Todd Market. So either stay indoors, wear a mask, or take to tops and take your chances near the wild mermaids scattered all around the fields. Sarah Lane gives one the ideal chance to take time to reflect on your weekend and perhaps life. Was it a waste of time and money? Yeah. Did you embarrass yourself and make enemies? Yes. Are you going to end up alone? Yes, you already are. Should cyclists be allowed to run through red lights and furthermore should you be obsessing over it? Yes and no. In the other order. Are you going to win the welly meat raffle? No, not with that attitude. Fortunately, the welly is open 24 hours a day. What better time is there than Tuesday morning at 9.45 to fashion up some kind of disguise and hope that they won't notice it's you again after they're telling you four times over the weekend that you're no longer welcome. Before you do trap yourself in that seemingly endless cycle of rejection and desperation to find validation from strangers, do consider some of the other tourist destinations nearby. On your right here is a graveyard, but it's attached to an house, so don't look at it, don't even look at it. Up the road here on right, there's an astronomy centre, the UK's only astronomy centre. It's open on Saturday evenings, which is prime meat raffle hours. Do check with Peter or Andy at tea time, but you can visit. Further up the road on the right there is Bake Up. Avoid Bake Up. A short walk up the hill on right here is Gorpal. Gorpal is a reservoir which is part of Gorpley Clough Nature Reserve. It has nearly 10 five circle reviews on TripAdvisor. This journey is a circular loop leading back to the building which houses Euro discount stores. It'll take you around 15 minutes by car, a few days on foot, or if you're bicycling, as long as you want really, just make sure you ride directly in the middle of the road and have a disregard for any pedestrians. Life is fleeting. In a hundred years time you'll be gone and buried, as will all the people you know and love. Everything you own is just stuff. All your stresses and worries won't mean a thing to you the second you expire. You'll soon be forgotten about. 
what was the name of the person who built that wall on the right? Who lived in that house the year it was built? Every moment of life is precious and won't be repeated, so make the most of every second. To recap, meet Raffle, one pound a ticket. Visit Todmorden. <laughs>